Today, I'm covering things that I don't like about Can-Am Riker. As I am a Can-Am writer, the list represents my opinion, plus a bit of research I've done on the internet. Since quality is one of the most critical factors for consumers when purchasing a product, I will analyze the quality of Can-Am Riker side by side. I understand everyone has their ideas and preferences about what they like or desire side by side and what they consider to be high quality. Some choose price above durability while others want a more luxurious and pleasant experience. Choosing the ideal three-wheeler motorcycle for your demands and needs is crucial. However, before you buy, you should be informed of a few issues with the vehicle. The issues I'll talk about people encounter when racing or traveling quickly on the trail. So, if you're only about hanging out on the dunes, you probably won't even deal with them. Number 1. Radius Rod and Wirings The main problem is that they aren't as long-lasting as they should be. With the original radius rods, the wheel assembly is also not evident. This may cause you to feel you've cleared everything just to hit a rock or anything sticking up, causing your radius rods to shatter or be damaged. And the wirings near your front wheels may be a bit loose and could be hitting the spinning rods. It can cause brake malfunctions and cut the connection between the control panel and the wheels. Number 2. Antifreeze Reservoir The antifreeze reservoir may leak the fluids and spill all over the wires. Some of the consumers took their Can-Am Riker to the dealer shop and got them fixed. You may get away with only replacing the reservoir or gluing the joints. However, a whole reservoir assembly and inner and outer reservoirs will be required most of the time. Number 3. Excessive Heat It'll be a blast spending the day with your Riker until it overheats. Overheating is a common issue with all off-road vehicles. With Riker, excessive heat comes from the left panel where the legs rest. As a result, you cannot leave your legs in that location due to the extreme heat. An infrared thermometer found a temperature to be at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The first question is, why is there so much heat being produced? Extreme heat is created by blowing air from the horizontally oriented exhaust pipe. Fortunately, the fixing procedure is easy. You can cover the exhaust pipe with a header wrap. Header wrap is a texturized fiberglass with a vermiculite coating that is exceptionally heat resistant. You can also purchase a heat shield for your exhaust system. However, since you will need to modify your three-wheeler, it may cause further problems. Number 4. Ignition Issues Cold starting is a typical problem not only with the Can-Am Riker, but also with other three-wheelers. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a ready-made answer until now. You can grab a long wooden rod and give the starter a good tap to resolve this issue, or simply look for a solid alternative to the original battery. Upgrade to an AGM or Optima type battery with additional reserve cranking amps to give your Riker starter the power to start the engine in a harsh winter condition. Number 5. Regular Maintenance If routine maintenance is not done attentively, the Can-Am Outlander 570 will have a few different issues. As an example, brake pads must be replaced regularly, damage occurs prematurely with stock brake pads, and many riders are disappointed with their quality. Fluid replacement is difficult since it necessitates the removal of the floorboard and body panel. You will rapidly become acquainted with your grease gun thanks to the machine's 16 grease zerks. Bushing might become lost after 700 kilometers. Number 6. Front and Rear Knuckles Problems Some versions' front and rear knuckles aren't up to par. The OEM knuckles have wheel bearing troubles and the center radius rod tends to flex. As a result, the cure is to replace the rear knuckles, as the front knuckles in some models become weak too quickly. The manufacturer claims that the front and rear knuckles they utilize have been lab tested and exceeded their requirements. Number 7. Hand and Parking Brake Issue If this happens to you and you don't have any tools, allow time for the bike to cool down. Applying brake pressure is a good idea. Set the key to the beginning position and pray. Number 8. Factory Accessory Add-ons I like the accessories Can-Am makes, they're easy to install. There are not a whole lot of tools required, that is a plus. But the big minus here is that their accessories are expensive. Anything you touch is 200, 300 or even 400. It all adds up. You buy 4 or 5 things and spend 1000 to 1200 bucks on accessories. Number 9. The Transmission Fuel Mileage I like the transmission on Can-Am, but I put it on my dislike list because it's CVT. I don't know how many of you are car enthusiasts, but I've had a lot of sports and fun vehicles, and I don't know how many of them are fun and sports cars have CVT transmissions in them. 
There's a reason why they don't have CVT in them. They are not meant to be taken out on curves and twisties into the racetrack. CVTs are morally more meant for economical driving and getting better gas mileage. So I do not have much experience with CVT transmissions in bikes or scooters. I'm not sure why they put a CVT in Can-Am Riker, cause it's a fun riding machine. It's certainly not helping the gas mileage. I'm getting 150 miles to the 5 gallon tank. I'll be honest with you, this bike's heavy, it's bigger, and they still put a CVT in it. The engine and transmission combo should have at least returned closer to 200 miles of the tank. That would have been really good, but this barely does 30 miles per gallon, and I'm sure the CVT is probably helping to get to 30 miles per gallon or 33, but it's still not very good. If you plan on taking a more extended trip with it, you just have to stop and fill up more often. I'm okay with that. I would have liked to see a little bit better gas mileage out of this Riker. So CVT transmission is both a plus and a minus. Number 10, quality control issues. Finally, I would like to address quality control issues in general. I suggest that if you are riding Can-Am, you already have many items rusting up. I have a few pieces I can already see rust on. I do start to see some rust on the right side, but the only water that it seems to me is washing it, and then I leave it out in the sun for it to dry correctly. I want to see next year's model with better rust proofing or materials. I'm not going to talk about the low quality plastics they have used. The whole bike is pretty much made of plastics. That's probably to save weight or money or make it cheaper to produce. If one of these parts is damaged, then I feel they're a little more affordable to purchase and replace than if you had a whole fairing bike or any with metal parts or painted plastic parts. Those parts could be expensive. So I'm just talking about the rest issues. The bottom line is, honestly, if I had to do it all over again, I would still buy this bike, no matter the problems. I would like Can-Am to care for some little things they could have but I love the bike. Don't let my list deter you from buying the bike. The likes outweigh the dislikes and I love it. But what do you think? Would you still buy Can-Am with all its disadvantages?